Hey teachers, in this week's teacher tip, I'm sharing a Google app that I'm not seeing very many teachers using, but it's one that I love. Google My Maps, not to be confused with Google Maps, is an amazing teaching tool, but when I talk to other teachers about it, a lot of them don't know what it is. Um, if you've heard of it before, click the thumbs up on this video and let me know that you have heard of it before. And if not, stay tuned because I'm gonna show you how to use it. It's really easy and there are so many ways that you can be using it in your classroom right now. Okay, so we are on my computer and the first thing that I want you to see is that My Maps is different from Google Maps. You can see over here I have Google Maps. This is where we can look at different places on the map, zoom in really close. But My Maps is a little bit different, and you're gonna see that in just a second. So to get started, click on Create a New Map, and you will see this come up. Now, let's title this map Places I Want to Visit. So let's say you wanna start a conversation with your class, so you want all of the students to pinpoint a place on the map that they would like to visit and then you can get your students starting a conversation about it. So first, let's move through the different tools. The first tool is gonna be your hand tool and that is what's gonna let you move your map around because we've got the whole globe, not just the United States. And if you double click, you can zoom in on any location as well. Now your next tool, this is gonna be the most important one. This is add your marker. And so this is how you are going to mark different locations on the map. So let's say I would like to visit Los Angeles. That place is showing. I'm gonna click there and drop my marker. And then on this line, I'm gonna name it Los Angeles. And then this is where you can add a description. So. Mrs. Vestal, if you're having a lot of students mark on the map, sometimes it's a good time, it's a good idea to have them add their name in the description. And so a place I want to visit because I have friends who live there. And then I'm just gonna click save. Now you'll see that it adds the marker and it gives you the exact location. If you click on this, you can change the color of the marker or add icons to it. This is how you can edit it. So if you wanna change the title or the description, you can. With this, this is really neat. You can add an image or video. So let's say I found a really cool YouTube video about some of the different things people can do when they visit Los Angeles. I could attach that here. This is a tool if you wanna add directions, which you most likely will not be using with your students. So I'm done with this, I'm gonna click X. Now another thing you can do that can help you put a marker down in a more precise location, like let's say you know some place that you wanna mark, but it's not clearly labeled on the map. We can type it in the search bar. So let's say I wanna visit Oxford, England. If I click on it, it will take me directly to Oxford and make it much, much easier for me to put my marker down. So then I can put Oxford, and let's say this is another student. So Lauren, uh, a place I want to visit because I want to attend Oxford University. So maybe that's a place that Lauren wants to visit, so she's telling us why, and we've saved it, and then once again, it's giving us the exact location and then telling us what Lauren put there. So then as your students add to this and they wanna see what other people are putting, they can click on the different places and it will take them to those places. Like you can see this tab that I, or this marker that I just dropped about Los Angeles, and they can read what their classmates are putting. Now, those are the tools that you're going to use the most. I will show you real quick some of the other tools. This is your draw a line tool. And to be honest, I find that I don't use these a whole lot. Occasionally you might use the add a line tool, which would allow you to draw a line um, between two locations. So the university and the library students could draw a line between those two places and name the line. 
And you can also add a driving route or a biking route, which once again, I really don't think your students are going to need to do that. The next tab is your add directions. And then this is if you draw a line or driving route and you want it to give you directions. Once again, I don't think you're gonna need to use that. But this one, measuring distances, is really cool and something that you might wanna use. So for this one, it's the same sort of thing as the line tool where you're going to draw a line, but then it will actually tell you the distance between the two places that you've marked. So that's a super cool tool. So those are pretty much all the tools that you have to work with when you're working in Mind Maps. Now the last things that I wanna show you, so remember, you need to be able to share this with your students and you're going to share it in the same way that you always would, either by sharing the link or typing your students' email addresses here, because remember, if you want them to be able to mark their map, they need to have access to it, so you're gonna to have to share it. And you can also preview the map like this, and then you can see what everybody's put. So we can clearly see somebody's labeled here and somebody's labeled here. And then if we click on the different places, it will give us more information. But that is how you use my maps. And I hope that this is something that you will make use of in your classroom. So now that you know how to use Google My Maps, I want to share with you a couple of different ideas of how to use it for the classroom. First of all, when you're studying a history topic, you can have students look up different places where events took place and label those places on the map. When studying history, you can also use it as a timeline. For example, students can use Google My Maps to label where different battles of the Civil War took place and basically create a timeline that way. Uh, you can use it during a novel study and have students look up places and label places that are described in the novel. There are so many possibilities. You could also use Google My Maps as part of morning meeting or just as a conversation starter. For example, ask students where is some place that they would like to visit and all of the students can log into the map and label different places around the globe that they would like to visit and have a conversation about that but I would love to hear how you're thinking about using Google My Maps in your classroom. Leave a comment below and let me know, and then make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel so that way you don't miss out on any of my future teaching tips. Until next time, happy teaching.